Oh, and someone just asked about the eight plus oils for the brain waves. Um, it is mm -hmm. the brain waves and vital centers class. We put up that if you get the eight plus kit and the eight plus kit is the vital centers oils. So yeah, they're not something that is, um, the blends are not on the website and we probably won't put them on the website. We'll probably just sell them as kits um, because they don't, I mean, you could use them individually, but they're really made to uh, function as a kit. And so, um, uh, so yeah, they're, they're new blends specifically for this. Yeah, I will paste what those 11 vital center oils will be. And so you'll have those. But Mary, your hands raised. Hey, Mary. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I actually have a question about the vital centers and whatever's coming up. I know that mm -hmm. you're getting into the brain waves, which sounds absolutely fascinating. I am sure that I am not the only one out there who works a 40 hour or better week every week. Mm -hmm. I am loving your classes. I so totally appreciate the life changing how life-changing they are but i will tell you that i run behind on them yeah. um i'm sure. also i'm i'm thinking you know i can go ahead and do that that weekend is actually halfway already filled up for me so i'd be missing half of it um i don't know i know there's been some classes in the past that either the recording isn't full and i don't know if that's on purpose or not um so i kind of hesitate to go ahead and hmm. um do that, and I'm wondering. And just I, I don't mean that as a negative. Yeah. I'm, no, no, okay. I completely understand. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm kind of wondering how are these all going to be available for purchase even afterwards? I feel almost yeah. overwhelmed over the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can count yeah. on that and, if I don't um, do it, they will be available. Yeah, yeah. The, um, we'll always kind of have them in the the class. Will this? Probably won't be the only time I teach it, but it will re be recorded. I think we had one or two classes where there was um, some issue with the storage where we lost some of the recording. Um, well, it's been that, recent. It was a recent one. Which one was it? Do you? I don't know that we're aware of. That. Yeah, I can. Um, it was the Kundalini one. So what? Sacred Fire. Really? Yeah. And I. I don't know if anybody's addressed it. I don't believe I missed anything. No, I looked uh, several times and went, hmm, that's interesting. I was around that weekend. And I honestly made my own recording. So I'm okay. okay. I would think what, that what parts people, missing, by the way. What parts um, missing? Go ahead and look. I think it was two days. There, It started, I believe, later on the Saturday and or ended. I don't know if it was early on one and late on the other or whatever, but there was, I want to say I got about half of it over two days. And I could be wrong. I went into go for the recording so I could watch the video and I do realize it wasn't there. And it was like, oh, okay, fine. But I didn't know if it was on purpose or not. I thought maybe if you were gonna put it out there, no, we'll just put it out there, maybe there were things we'll that didn't want on there. Yeah. Okay, and I just, yeah. okay. And that's, you know, neither here nor there. I just kind of wanted to make sure that they were gonna be available. I just feel mm -hmm. so behind that working so much and being unavailable, it's like, there's been so much so fast that um, I feel like I can't incorporate it all. So right. it's like hit or miss on what am sure, I gonna sure, put sure. today? Right. And I know I'm not the only one feeling that. So what do you suggest? Um, I, I would suggest doing something that kind of um, talks to you in, uh, in the here and now for where you're at, you know? Okay, if so they, have, um, anything upcoming will be available and you will offer the kit again or yeah. consistent. Yeah, we have the kits um, made. So like, pe uh, because people will always um, um, come and purchase the class even after the fact. And so we still send them the kit and like, like the class is happening and, you know, send out the recording and the kit and all that. So, you know, don't feel that you need to do it right now. You can always Okay, and that's kind of what I was doing is yeah. going, you know, I'm not sure how long they're going to be available or, you know, such. They're um, going to so be like, grab them while I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a lot of times what happens is if we teach it, you know, again, then when we send out the recordings, we send you out like, you know, both recordings. Oh, I know. I, I, I keep an eye on that. And I, yeah, I do that constantly. And there's like very few, mm -hmm. little that I've actually missed. It's just a matter of I can't sit here. Sure. Usually weekends are my 
work time. So it's like, I will take that recording and I'll listen an hour a day or whatever, but it'll take me a month to get through something. And then the next, yeah. you know, the next thing is it's overwhelming. But, and I'm also curious, do you know, have a, do you know where you're going with the brain waves? Um, I know that you had mentioned a week or two ago, whenever I was last here, I wasn't here this last weekend, but I know you had said you're going to do all the chakras one by one. I'm wondering if that's mm -hmm. seven, nine, or is it going to be, and I, I think you it. said you were going to do all one a month it. and I'm wondering where it's going from there. Do you know? It's going to be all 11. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you know where it's going? What do you mean where or it's going? Well, I don't know. I heard you talk the first time about brainwaves of a year ago. And all of a sudden it's like mm -hmm. here. I'm going, well, that's interesting. Um, is it going to be just like all 11 of them put out there? And was there more to it? Or is that yeah, I don't what I have to say? Is that it? But. Um, they'll be tied together in um, some of the other classes, like the uh, materialization will have an aspect of brain waves, and then um, even the healing classes, like for pain and for other things, they already have a foundation of brain wave uh, function built within, but I just didn't talk about it. And so we'll be coming back around and talking a little bit more in depth about that, and also when it comes to like sleep and memory. And so uh, the brainwave information will be integrated into all the other processes for physical and psychological healing and for materialization as well. Well, and is it going to be new classes on that or is I just love doing the repeats because might I just, get something out of it every time that I didn't get the first yeah. time. Some of it might be um, like a study group where we just have like a little free study group where we go back and revisit it and then I add on some information. And if it's a lot of information, we might make it into a new like advanced class or something. Okay. And I'll tell you, I absolutely loved, especially the Tuesday nights because it's two hours. I can get through two hours right, and right. get That's, something uh, out of it, which is yeah. fabulous. And I get more yeah. out of these sometimes than I do the entire weekend. Yeah, sure. I, I don't it's mean your to, schedule. You know, yeah. Yeah. And in Wednesday, we're um, or in April, we're going to start doing Wednesdays where we just take an hour and, you know, again, trying to just fit it into everybody's schedule and just do a segment out of one of the classes. Regardless if you've had the class or not, it will be open to everybody. And just to do like a little review on that one little segment and go through and, you know, practice it. And um, so less Q&A and just doing something just right out of one of the booklets. And you know so, what? And that's that's great. Typically, what I do is if I can just mm -hmm. get this recording on a Tuesday night, I just I load it on so I can see where the um, <laughs> I load on a program so I can actually see where the meditation starts. Mm -hmm. And I'll take that to bed with me. And it's fabulous. So anyway, I'm and, just totally enjoying these. So one of the things that we're also doing is, um, you know, I've been over the last like, I don't know, six weeks or so. I've been writing a bunch of information that um, like the, the newsletter has the, you know, the oil of the week or whatever that we just talk about. And then Michael and I talk about it is um, I have about 80 or 90 oils that I'm making the encyclopedia for, for all the different applications of that particular oil. And um, we're going to be putting that in each of the booklets like every time i'm still polishing it up and still wanting to add more information and so um, kind of every spare moment i get um, i'm adding uh, more information to that so that could be um, a reference book for for everybody and then the, the booklets themselves are in the process of making recordings for like the different um, the different patterns that we do and the different applications, you know, sustain inhalation versus ointment versus, you know, a spray or a liniment. And we're making little videos of them. And so we're going to turn the book into being something um, uh, interactive. And so like if you have it in a PDF, you know, whatever you're looking at, you could hit that, that segment and it will take you to YouTube and run you through the segment um, from your booklet you know you choose the oil and then boom it'll take you into a little guided session and so even if you didn't go through and follow the class we're trying to make it so that the booklet can be interactive and um, provide you with just a quick like you know life's on the run and you want to pick it up and do something but you don't want to go through the whole class to get to that segment you can just bring up the pdf and just start following the pdf and then start hitting the links 
do it as you go. And then even if there's an oil where you're like, okay, this has hyssop in it, uh, I wonder what else hyssop would be good for. And you can hit the link and it'll take you to the, to the information and to the YouTube page where it's, you know, me and somebody talking about, you know, the oil, like in depth. And so we're trying to make it as um, interactive and 21st century as possible. Just a lot of setup work to get it all to that point. But I'd say by summertime, the booklets are gonna look very, very different. Well, it's been fabulous. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, life life is busy and we all had time when COVID had the shutdown, but as things open up, we'll, we'll be out and doing things and life is busy. So we're, we're trying to help it and make it as user friendly as possible. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, go ahead, Peggy. Hey, Miss Peggy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I can't believe it. Sometimes I look and I've got oils, you know, different trays of oils. And sometimes I can't find one that I want until I don't need it. And then I find it. It's like my eyes. And so yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. find my mugwort at the moment. And so does right. Artemisia, does that, can I, if I want, if you were going to do yeah. something with the mugwort, yeah. could I substitute? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's here someplace. I just, it's hiding. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Even the much. kit that where we have the normal kit um, that's coming up for the vital center thing, um, we're trying to make it so um, like you can just leave it as a little kit. And so when you want your vital centers, you can just pull that out and it can do everything. So that, that works way, good. Yeah, but that way you can just have kits for the classes and then you know, we tend to have a little bit of overlap and, um, um, you know, and then you scramble around trying to find it for this this class or that class and we're trying to make it so, again, it's as user friendly and cuts down time and everything. And so we're gonna do a new approach with the vital centers and, um, and make it as turnkey as possible. Well, isn't vital centers half a title? What's the first half of the title? Oh, brain brainwaves and vital centers. So brainwaves. If I ordered the the brainwaves, that will only get you part there. There's there's a I whole totally section, did. and actually, you know what? Vital centers is out of is out out of Astara. Like it's um, it's in the second degree lesson, where after she talks about the blood, and then okay. she lists the the eleven vital centers. Um, she makes reference to the vital centers and the zodiac, and so um. um you know, I, I've written three or four classes just based on that little section on the star. So the brain waves are separate than the vital center oils. There's like two yes. two bunches that goes yeah. with that particular yes. class. Yeah. Okay. The vital centers are all to to calm down your limbic responses, which are Good. your physiology and like emotions kind of yeah. mixed point. And so, okay. um, you know, we had a couple of people where. You know, they were getting triggered really easy and getting agitated really easy. And we didn't even do patterns. I just had them sit and inhale the, the different oils and it just took them to a um, uh, very neutral place. And then something happened that would normally trigger them. And they were just like, they could observe it. And it was like, not even a trigger. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're so welcome. Yeah, so I just want to add really quick, because um, I've had this question emailed to us a lot, and the Brainwaves kit, you're going to be able to utilize yeah, it's every, be, yeah. every single Bunch of brain classes. class, yeah. and different Brainwaves are really hit in each class, so you will use the Brainwaves kit in every class, maybe not the whole kit, but definitely you will, and the Sacred Fire, the very first brainwave class, you can use the whole kit in that class. And I just mm -hmm. want to make sure everyone kind of understood the brainwaves kit is utilized in every single brainwaves class and you can play with them just on their own. Yeah. They're really strong. So, yeah. and let's see if anyone else has their hand raised. Yeah, go ahead, Chris.
Um, we can't hear you. You are unmuted, but we can't hear you. Sorry, we still can't hear you. So um, sometimes if we you come out and come back in, we'll be able to hear. Um, but as soon as your microphone's working, we're happy to answer whatever question you might have. Is artemisia the same as wormwood or different plant? Different plant. Um, uh, wormwood is an artemisia family, but um, artemisia, we call the uh, artemisia because that's what it used to be called in medical aromatherapy when they would refer to mugwort. And um, the mugwort and the artemisia come from different regions, um, but wormwood is actually a different plant. And so wormwood is kind of in the same vein of those things, but it's a um, little bit darker. It has a different smell. Um, and uh, even tarragon is in the Artemisia family. And so Davana is in the Artemisia family. So there, there's some, several plants that are Artemisias, but um, Artemisia and mugwort kind of go hand in hand. Wormwood starts to be a little bit of a different animal. And go ahead, Chris. Hey, Chris. Sorry, we still can't hear you. Oh, there we go. Go. Hey, Chris. Is that working? Yes. Yeah, there we go. So I had used OneNote to scan the booklet and it became a searchable document. So whenever I come up with an issue, I'm able to oh, wow. pull up one note and say upset stomach and it'll find different oils and different parts that come up with upset stomach. So that's one way to maybe make it an, an easier. Searchable. Wow, okay. So you downloaded it in the one note? No, well, I just took my, my phone scanner and through OneNote scanned a PDF of each page of the booklet and it turned it into an OCR scannable document. Wow. So I was able to easily, anytime I'm in, open my OneNote and I look for an oil, I can either go for the oil or the symptom and it'll find it for me. Oh, tremendous. So I just wanted to share that as something. Boy, that, thank you for sharing that. That's a big one. Yeah, that was a big help for me, having it yeah. all on my phone. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go into your chats. Um, which one was he just talking about for the trigger neutralizer? Class? Oh, the brainwaves and vital centers. It, it targets... Um, uh, limbic function. Are there two kits for the brain waves and vital centers? Do we order both? Do we choose one or order both? The vital centers kit is um, all the vital centers and um, uh, there is a vital kit center too, uh, excuse me, a uh, brain wave kit as well. And so the brain wave kit gets used in a bunch of different classes. Um, brain waves are going to be in several of the classes throughout the year, and so you'll be able to use that kit in everything. The vital centers is specific to to this. It's not about the brain waves. It's just about the vital centers themselves, the limbic centers. But I think you're wondering. Yeah, there is a kit. If you pay the two twenty five early bird price, you get a kit for the class, which is what Greg always does. So you're right. able to take the class and participate. If you want an A plus choice for that class, it is the Vital Centers A plus oils kit. And so that one's another option. You do not have to buy both. No. Um, go ahead, Balaji. Hey, Balaji. 
Oh, hi, good evening. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> hi. So a quick question, Greg. Um, mm -hmm. the last two days, uh, I've had the stiff lower back and I've tried the low back release from the pain management class. Mm -hmm. and I, I still doesn't seem to have release. So I'm just wondering what else can I do? It looks like it's your kidneys. Oh, okay. Uh, have you been like regular urination or excessive urination or not urinating as much? Any of those? No, it's been okay. It's been okay. It's just that like with work, maybe I'm just, maybe I hold it a lot longer than I should, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Let's, let's have you take a couple drops of like Lovage. Do you have Lovage or if not like um, Parsley or, or Juniper internally? And then do the, um, do the part for um, using like the higher consciousness or use tarragon or galbanum or uh, anise mm -hmm. and do the sinus pattern and then do the digestive tract pattern. Okay. Like take some of the tension out of the gut and I bet you that knocks it out. If it doesn't knock it out in 24 hours or so, um, email us and let us know. Sorry, so, so, sorry, Greg, one more time. The sinus pattern and... Uh... Digestive tract. Digestive pattern. Yeah. All right, and that's from the higher consciousness consciousness class. You said no, no. Use the blend higher consciousness. Oh, oh or, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have the higher consciousness, so <laughs> so tarragon, galbanum, okay. anise, like any of those will work. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, and then like uh, when you said like partially internally, maybe a couple of drops. Is it? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thank yeah. you. It, it looks like it's just like uh, tension in the smooth muscle, and it looks like um, uh, the kidneys are just not regulated. Okay. Not, not bad, just a little tiny bit. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. But if it doesn't clear up in 24 hours, let us know. I will, I will. Okay, thank you. Just going through the chat here. If you guys have a question, go ahead and raise your hand or just unmute yourself. Okay, I don't mean to spend so much time on this, but I can tell it's still confusing for people. Um, so there is the brainwaves kit, which has the five brainwaves that and that will be able to be utilized throughout all of Greg's brainwave classes. And if you just want to do inhalations of them, the class coming up called Brainwaves and Vital Centers. The Vital Centers is the A plus kit that Greg is offering. If you just purchase that kit, you can take the Brainwaves and Vital Centers class for free. If you want to just do the Brainwaves and Vital Centers class, you it's the regular price as usual and you will get a kit um, with that as well it's just to give people who really want those a plus choices the ability to you know be able to get those a plus choices um, before um, class actually happens i hope that cleared that up again Anybody else have any questions they want to ask? Um, we had a handful of people come in before we were able to just let you guys um, know if you didn't get the newsletter, we did have an interview with Greg for Mugwort. He and Michael were talking about it and that's on YouTube and I'll put a link in here in the chat as well for that. So you can enjoy. And there aren't any more questions. I think we'll just maybe get started for today. Okay. I have yeah. a question. Um, yeah, hi, how are you? Uh, somebody who has asthma, like severe respiratory um, issues, uh, what would you recommend? Like, like, tell me what severe respiratory issues means. Um, 
when he eats, he starts coughing. Um, if hair uh, problems. How old is this person? 65. Okay. So when he eats, he starts coughing. Um, okay. And what else? Um, if he comes in contact with somebody and their breath is in his face, he starts coughing. Hmm. Um, constant mucus buildup, just constant spitting of mucus. Constant spitting of mucus. And does, I mean, history of bronchitis or pneumonia or anything like that? It was just possible? three years ago, um, a doctor said it was, um, what do you call it? Work from, from work. It, it a uh, person does like construction, um, carpentry type of work and never wore a mask. Oh. So did he get diagnosed with like COPD or anything like that? It wasn't called CO, it, it's kind of like asthma, so to speak. It wasn't COPD though, but asthma. But so sometimes it's like severe coughing and the coughing, uh, I didn't even know the coughing um, reduces the oxygen in the body. Uh, are we talking about emphysema? No, it, it, not emphysema, but the coughing. Okay. Like if, if it's a severe coughing, because uh -huh. um, when you're coughing, you're not breathing. Right. Okay, so we have mucus. We have um, a lot of chronic coughing. So a couple of couple of things, um, you know, and a lot of times like something like this, you kind of have to treat because people also have like different temperaments some, somewhat and and it's not all, excuse me, like um, a clear path to how to treat it. Um, how, how is his health otherwise? Good. It's always good. been good until this happened. Okay. So this is, and did, did he have COVID this year or anything like no. that? No. No, okay. So he stayed healthy through that. And up until this respiratory issue, um, okay. Um, okay, so th this is what I would say. Um, these are like things to like kind of start exploring is when we wanna dry up the mucus. And there, there's a very, um, there's several ways that you could do it, but there's a very, um, uh, like kind of practical way and inexpensive way of doing it. And um, uh, there is an essential oil called Terebinth, like T-E-R, yeah, T-E-R-E-B-I-N-T-H. Can you spell it again? Yeah, T-E-R-E-B-I-N-T-H. And we're putting it in the chat. Okay. And so um, this, you would just like open up the bottle and have him take long, slow, deep breaths, like kind of like directly from the bottle. And so in through his nose and out through his mouth. And the thing with that is it's one of the best things for drying up uh, mucus. It doesn't really break it up like um, there's other things that will break it up. But um, here, there sounds like there's like a lot of excess and we just need to kind of dry up the, the production. And so terebinth is really good for drying up the, the mucus. Now, you have um, another issue is that um, you have tension in the, in the respiratory tract that's, I, I suspect he's probably also gulping air through his mouth. Um, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't want to say a common thing, but it can also irritate the gut a little bit. And, um, so one of the things that we use for that is, um, anise or anise, however you want to say it. And, um, again, he could just take long, slow, deep breaths with that. Um, you could rub a little bit on his chest in like some lotion, like up really high, like where his throat and chest kind of meet. Um, or you could put a few drops in water and have him drink it. And that will relax the, like the, 
respiratory tract and the trachea and, and not make um, the, the tendency to be so constricted. You know, sometimes the constriction can be almost like a little bit of a muscle spasm, or it could be the gulping of the air could be irritating the stomach. And sometimes the cough will even start down in the gut and, and you know, produce, produce a cough. Um, and then um, you have a couple of things that you could tackle for um, chronic coughs. And the good thing about all of this is they're all relatively inexpensive oils. And so anise is not expensive, terebinth is not expensive. And then these other two, um, one is hyssop. And hyssop is always good for anything respiratory. Hyssop can be used. I mean, it's one of the ones that, you know, everybody should kind of have in their medicine cabinet. Now, there is a stronger um, for relaxing the diaphragm. Um, it's a special type of hyssop called hyssop decumbens. And hyssop decumbens, you could use it to a much greater degree, and it has a much more uh, deeper impact on the diaphragm, which would also help relax the muscles in the throat. And sometimes what happens is the muscles in the throat aid in, in lifting the rib cage to um, uh, help with uh, respiration, you know, the inhalation and exhalation. And when certain muscles, especially there's this one muscle referred to as the sternocleidomastoid, you don't need to know it, but it's just, it's the SCM. And when it gets really contracted, it causes a really bad spasmodic cough. And so um, by inhaling the hyssop, um, it relaxes the diaphragm, it relaxes the muscles in the neck, and it helps to deepen the breath and slow down the breath. Um, and that's one that I would definitely put in the mix of all of that. And then there's an oil that is used for really chronic coughs. Um, it has um, an anti-inflammatory property and it's really um, quite gentle. It's so gentle that you could use it on children. And so sometimes when people's lungs are really irritated, they can't handle like um, harsh smells. And so the terebinth is really gentle, by the way. It's really, it, it's, it has a scent, but it's not a very strong scent. Um, the hyssop has a little bit of a eucalyptus -y kind of smell. But the, the one oil that is really super good for chronic, chronic coughs is myrtle. Um, just the good old fashioned myrtle oil. And um, you, know, you can again put several drops in your hand in the lotion and rub it on the chest, but uh, have, have him inhale the oil um, several times a day, like 10, 15 long, slow, deep breaths at a time. Um, times where there's been chronic coughs, that has been um, very, very helpful. Um, the combination is probably what we'll have to go after, but if you really just said like bottom line, uh, if you didn't want to make it so complicated, I would probably just do the myrtle and the terebinth. Um, the other two probably need to be explored, but, but you could probably start off with just doing those two. and. Um, I would think that he would get relief. You know, I think he would get relief pretty, you know, might might be a couple of days of treatment and you should see changes within the first day, but definitely by the second day. Thank you. You know, I have a lot yeah. of essential oils, but I don't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, you, that you know, is amazing. Yeah, ter terebinth is, is, um, is basically pine, but it's the wood. And the, the pine oils don't quite dry things out the way the terebinth does. And, um, and these, you know, it's, it's a really good, um, it takes the tension out of the, the smooth muscle of the respiratory tract. But one of the things that it's really good for is it helps to regulate the autonomic nervous system. And so sometimes we're either too much in like fight flight or sometimes we can even be too much in rest and repair, but usually it's too much in fight flight. And so that can cause like tension in the respiratory tract and the anise will calm that down substantially. And then um, hyssop is very old school. Like when, when I was first taught 30 years ago, you know, it was bread and butter, but it really fell off the the U.S. market, um, you know, people don't use it because if, if um, 
if you were to ingest a bunch of it, you know, it's potentially like toxic. And so, you, you know, here we, we don't ingest hyssop, you, you know, there's other things that you could ingest, but hyssop is not one of them. And used um, to, to inhale, it, it relaxes the muscle, but it also helps to stimulate the, the medulla, which is the base of your skull on the backside. And the medulla has to do with like circulatory function, heart function, and respiratory function, like your respiratory rate. And so, I mean, hyssop is just, it's a really bread and butter oil to use for anything respiratory and anything circulatory. Um, because it, you know, it has that regulating effect on the, on, on those systems. And then the myrtle, you know, myrtle is one of those ones where it gets kind of overlooked because, you know, if you have respiratory things, you go to like a eucalyptus or you go to, a, you know, a hyssop or a rosemary, or, you know, you go to kind of fancy things. And there's, you know, there's a lot of fancy respiratory oils, but myrtle is um, really good for, chronic coughs, it's, it's very anti-inflammatory and it's so gentle that you could use it on an infant. And so like eucalyptus, you really can't use on an infant. Um, just it's too, too strong, too overstimulating, too overpowering, but I mean, it would be okay, but it, it would be better to use myrtle. And so, um, um, you know, and there's different kinds of myrtle, but here you, you could just use a standard myrtle or like a green myrtle, you know? We're in the Vital Center class. We have a, a new oil that we're doing. It's uh, anise seed myrtle. Like it's kind of anise and myrtle all, all together. And, um, you know, there's just these variations of myrtle. But um, we are not using it so much for our respiratory issues. We're using it more for uh, the impact it has on the autonomic system. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. And, and so, you know, you have, you have our email. Um, and, you know, within a few days or like a, like a week of treatment, if that's not getting better, you know, sometimes what, what we do is like if the oils aren't working, sometimes we'll switch over and I can suggest some herbal things you can get off of Amazon or from your health food store. And, um, you know, let's do some things to get him feeling better. You know, he's too young for, for stuff to be knocking him down like that. You had said hyssop, and then you said decum something. Can you spell that word? Oh, decumbens. Yeah, decumbens. Um, D e c u m b e n s. So it's a it's a variation of uh, hyssop. Okay, yeah. I'm not hyssop. Thank his, you. Hyssop decumbens. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. learning so much. Oh, Thanks. good. I'm I'm so glad. <laughs> a lot of times, like when other companies have hyssop, a lot of times they'll have the hyssop decumbens versus regular hyssop. And so, um, you know, if you already had it, you might check and see that it's hyssop decumbens. And Chris, your hand is up. Hey, Chris. So I wanted to give you an update with the black cumin for my dad's scar tissue. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we've been to a couple other doctor's appointments since then, and even one of them, we were kind of talking back and forth, and he had mentioned it's the progression of his well, digression, I guess, mm -hmm. has been so prompt that it's most likely not due to scar tissue. Okay because it's just been compounding so quickly, like in the last six months, just testing uh, his reflexes, they've substantially diminished in his upper. Oh, really? Yeah. So it, it's a very complex case because there's neuropathic issues, but then there's also the spinal cord injury where he had the laminectomy and the hardware put in. Mm -hmm. He had to go yesterday to get an x-ray and CT scans because he took a fall and he's been having more pain in his neck. So now we have to go back to one of his, his doctors to compare the previous scans with this one to see what kind of damage might have happened. Wow. Yeah. So there's just a noticeable balance issue. And like I said, the big thing for him is the hands clamping closed. He can't 
open them. Like they just do, like he can't yeah. open them up like that. He cannot open them since the next surgery. It, and it's just progressively gotten worse where they're closing and he can't, even doing exercises cannot make them open to function. Okay, give me just a second here. Let me look at something in my notes. Some of my notes are digital and some of them I'm, I'm you know, kind of old school with some of my older notes. And let me see if I have them in my digital notes. No, I, I have a big stack of um, old notes that are all handwritten. Yeah, that's where the one note came in for me trying to get all of my okay. information together. And and so um, did did they test for any sort of autoimmune issue? I'm just curious. It, I couldn't honestly tell you all of the tests that he's had uh, over the last few years. It's been an incredible amount. Uh, okay. And the the other thing is. Um, did they ever use the term dystonia? Dystonia, not dystonia. that I have heard. No. Um, when when he does he fall just like he'll be standing there and he kind of falls? No, it it seems to be more of. It almost looks like telling the feet to move and the the feedback isn't there as quick. Is what it looks like, and and I'm I'm just trying to piece it together watching as things happen in his life and with him, uh, it, it's just, he has trouble sometimes getting to the moving and then I, it almost looks like stopping the movement. Does he ever do these little, like like when he starts moving, it looks like he's dancing a little bit? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. I, I think he has dystonia. I mean, I'm not trying to diagnose it, but it, it helps. So there, you know, the, the vagus nerve can lose tone, but what can happen sometimes is the, the sympathetic um, um, division of the autonomic nervous system can lose tone. And um, that, that's interesting. It, it, you know, it's, it's a really hard one to diagnose and you really almost have to be um, like almost like looking for it to, to even find it. Has has his writing has has his writing changed? Oh, he can't write. He can't grab he can't, the pen. Oh, he can't yeah. grab the pen at all. No. Anything. Yeah. His so let, let's let's have you. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you um, some uh, a list of about four or five oils okay. and uh, like a ratio. And um, if you don't have them, like, let us know and we'll make an adjustment. But um, so marjoram. Mm -hmm. And then basil, mm -hmm. and then rosemary. Okay. And helichrysum. Do you happen to have helichrysum? Yes, I do. Okay, so you're gonna put 10, 10 drops of marjoram. Like, find a little bottle that you can blend in. Okay. And so you'll do ten drops of marjoram, five drops of basil. Okay about 12 to 15 drops of rosemary, let's just say 15. Okay. And then about five or six drops of um, the helichrysum. Okay. And then mix it in a carrier oil, like mix that all together and shake it up. And then from that, you're gonna put, well, that's about 30 drops right there, right? 15, 25. Okay, so put all of that in a bottle and then an ounce of carrier oil and then shake it up and then rub it on his his arms and his neck, like his like upper upper back between his shoulder blades okay. and um, do do that uh, a couple of times or have somebody do it like a couple of times a day and see if that even brings an ounce of relief. Like, so let's just see if that brings what kind of relief it will bring. Okay. Um, if if you can, um, I would also probably give him a couple of drops of anise or anise, you know, however you want to say it, um, okay. and water, and have him drink it, just because it will um, help to tone the sympathetic nervous system and start to balance it out. But if it's what I think it is, um, 
we, we just got to fortify the sympathetic uh, part of the nervous system and um, uh, let's start with that. Um, They, they never threw around the term torticollis, did they? Not that I've heard. Okay. Uh, so, um, and I, I can tell you that Clary Sage has made a world of difference in his life just so far okay. as even getting work. Keep, keep him on that as well. Like, you know, have him inhale that. I mean, that's actually fortifying to the nervous system as well. That's and it's and, it's, and, and it's, yeah, and it's spasmodic. And so, you know, if it's bringing them relief, you know, just stay on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But try try this blend and see if it works. So just kind of concoct it and then add some lotion or massage oil to it. And then, you know, mix it all up and then rub it on the areas and see if it starts to bring him some relief. Okay. I will definitely yeah. do that. And, and then maybe email us and just keep us posted on, on progress. Um, we might have to do several adjustments with that, but um, it's been a while since I've treated that, but I used to treat that actually quite, quite often because it's such a weird, odd thing. If it, if it is what I think it is, um, yeah. you know, uh, I have a ton of notes on it, a ton of notes. Well, and that's where just sitting back and trying to watch and observing and trying to hold myself back from trying to jump in and help all the time. I right. trying to take notes and observe so I can really yeah. figure out what's going on. Yeah. And um, I would say if it's what I think it is, it, it's um, not commonly diagnosed. Okay. Like, um, I, I actually wouldn't even know anything about it had an osteopath not pointed it out to me. Okay. Like, um, like now I can kind of see the signs because he told me what to look for. But uh, up until then, I, I wouldn't have known, you, you know, it's, it's, it's not super common condition. Yeah. So, and it was really nice because his last doctor's appointment, he kind of confirmed that he doesn't believe that it is an ALS type. That's good. So oh he, he got him good. started on, there's a preventative medicine or um, not a preventative, but it, it just slows it down if it is ALS. I forgot mm -hmm. the name of it, but that's all it does. It doesn't help improve anything. All it does is slows down the progression. But the doctor said that throughout all the tests and everything the last couple of times, He's not leaning towards ALS. He's thinking that it's all due to the next surgery. Yeah, boy, thank God. Yeah, um, because that one's a rough one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's try this. Let's put this in motion, and we'll kind of go from there. But um, um, give it a few days of treatment, and just see if it brings him any amount of relief. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And then much. we'll go from there. Yeah, we'll go from there. I'd rather do like lots of baby steps than shotgun a whole bunch of things and, and you know, just go at it really. Um, let's let's uh, make sure that we're getting it with what we're doing rather than just throwing everything in the kitchen sink at it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Shannon, your hands raised. Hey, Shannon. Hi guys. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Greg. Mm -hmm. Hello. So a couple of questions um, that mm -hmm. came up at work today. Uh, one of them was a patient of mine whose husband was struggling with gout really bad and they've got him on several different medications and he just keeps having side effects and can't seem yeah. to get it underway. The, the gout medications can be uh, pretty harsh. Yeah. Um, so a cu couple of things. Um, th there are some really um, uh, simple oils that you can use. Um, one is um, the iron bark eucalyptus, or uh, there's another type of eucalyptus called eucalyptus citradora. Um, you could put them together, but it's really kind of one or the other. Um, you could put several drops of that in some lotion and rub it on the spot. Um, you know, like if it's the toe or the thumb, you know, you can uh, even rub the whole leg down uh, if, if needed. Um, 
uh, a stronger version of that is to still use the, um, the ironbark eucalyptus with um, lovage, either the leaf or the root. And that really helps to, the ironbark eucalyptus helps to reduce the inflammation and break up um, some of the deposits in the joint. Um, the lovage is really more about the deposits than it is about the inflammation. Uh, you could augment it with um, like some sort of chamomile or something like German chamomile or, you know, helichrysum, you know, something that's anti-inflammatory. Um, anything that's dark blue is, is always good or helichrysum and mix it all together and then a little ointment and um, that should help. Um, take him out of crisis and cut down the inflammation. The lovage and the ironbark eucalyptus actually start to break up the little um, and, and release, the, help the body to process the little crystalline deposits that happen in the joint. Um, okay. You could actually even put the lovage. Um, one of the things I like to do for gout is to do like a little dry brush over the low back and the kidney area and then take several drops of lovage and then put it in a little bit of lotion or a little bit of massage oil and then just rub it over the kidney area just to help strengthen the, the kidneys. Um, that can be quite, quite helpful as well. Um, if you don't have those um, on the kidney area, you could also use um, like black spruce or white spruce. Okay. Um, the black spruce, a little bit more toning to the kidneys. The white spruce has a bit more of um, an inflammatory effect than the black spruce. And so um, between that combination, that usually will get them comfortable within a day or two. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Thank you. The, the lovage used on a regular basis, I've actually got people where they don't even need the um, gout medicine anymore. Perfect. So once they yeah. get out of crisis, just start using the lovage. Would you use yeah. that in like a carrier oil? I, or? I would use it topically and then like maybe two or three times a week, take a drop or two and water and drink it. Like I, I do lovage probably a couple of times a week just to keep the kidneys regulated and healthy. And um, I tend to pee a little bit more when, when I take it, you know, because it, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a diuretic, but it makes the kidneys, you know, function better. And so the thing is, is like kidneys um, are a little bit more sensitive to, to the essential oils taken internally. So I would just say like once or twice a week is probably good. And then the rest can be topical. And so, um, you know, you can just make him up a little ointment that he rubs on his low back or, you know, even if it's on the sides a little bit, just get it somewhere in the area and um, that should be enough. And when he's in crisis, one of the, one of the things that you could always augment with um, in, any sort of pain syndrome is um, galbanum. You know, even if it's uh, two or three drops on the wrist, it really takes the pain level down a little bit and uh, takes the tension out of the body from, from, you know, being in pain. And so when, when they're in the middle of a crisis, um, there tends to be more um, body tension because of the reaction to the pain. And, um, you know, there's things that are actually better pain relievers, but galbanum is really good about taking the tension out of the body and reducing the body reaction to pain. And so... Um, uh, Would you take that is, internally, the galbanum? You, I mean, you could, but um, actually even just putting it on the wrist it, or inhaling it, but I, I usually have them put it on their wrist. Um, a lot of times that that's actually strong enough. And so if he's open to taking it internally, go ahead. But if not, just get it on his wrist. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing before I forget, I've had a couple of patients that I've been treating some keloids with the heliochrysum. Mm -hmm. And just after two weeks, um, I am so pleased with the progress on that. Good, 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 good. Yes, it's doing wonderful. Isn't and it then, amazing? Helichrysum blows my mind sometimes. Uh, you, you know, I've seen it do like tremendous things and then there'll still be like, oh, I don't know if it's going to treat this. And it, man, it just knocks yeah. it out of the park. It really well, is amazing. And you know, my go-to has always been injecting with um, with steroid to break up, you know, the, the keloids and there's a risk mm -hmm. of atrophy and sure. uh, so many other side effects. And I'm like, this is so much better than risking all those yeah. things. So. Yeah. 
it's it's Ooh, definitely uh, starting to become my next to go to for keloid. Yeah. Um, and then latter today's been a really crazy day at work, and I've started getting these really deep chest palpitations. And I'm having a hard time deciphering if it's mine <laughs> or right. just the stress of the day or my thyroid. But um, it's every now and then it's just a really deep, almost like a PVC or a really deep uh, thump in my chest. Hmm. Palpitations. My heart rate's just up a little more than it normally is. And um, I know I haven't had as much water as I typically do in a day because I've been so busy and I usually and have. A... And, you, and your blood pressure is okay? Like you've checked your blood pressure and all that's okay? I don't have a way to check it right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, palpitations yeah. doesn't necessarily mean blood pressure issues. So I mean, uh, right. you don't. Um, so a, cu a couple of things is um, you could try... Um, uh, Elang Lang sometimes will work for palpitations. Okay. Um, and then also neroli. Neroli will okay. sometimes work. And um, uh, I would probably, either one of those, um, I would probably put a couple drops on water and take it internally. Okay. Uh, do you have a preference? Because I have both of them. Um, I would probably do the neroli. Um, okay. Lang Lang does work, but I think the neroli is that usually a little stronger for it. Okay. I and will try so, it. you know, just see if that calms it down. Um, and if it's also anxiety, you, both of those would help the anxiety. But um, my guess is, you, you know, it could just be stress. And, you know, that's the, that's, it's a really bizarre thing with stress. Like it's, you could be emotionally and mentally just chill and fine, but your body could be in a stress state and mentally and emotionally, you don't even feel it. And so, you know, it could be people that you're interacting with. It could be just the intensity of the things you're dealing with. It could be people are coming in an agitated state. You know, it could be all kinds of things. And so oh. I'd almost treat it as, you know, palpitations and then work backwards just to make sure. But right. both of those would reduce stress as well. So it would reduce stress. They would re reduce anxiety. But the palpitation thing um, it should reduce the palpitations. Thank you. And I kind of was wondering that I, um, I am pretty laid back and chill all the time. And I've been getting an increasing amount of, um, of like uh, cosmetic fillers and, in, in, you know, I'm in dermatology and that gives me a lot right. of stress and anxiety because it's, it's, yeah, it's just a part of my work that um, is yeah. increasing and it, it stresses me out. <laughs> Well, plus you're seeing a lot of patients. And so like sometimes it's, it might not even be you, it might actually be the patients that are, you know, um, worked up or anxious about something and. I take it know. all in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all yeah. right. Well, thank you so much. I'm you're gonna so go welcome. try the I'm glad, now. I'm glad the helichrism is working out so well for the keloids. Oh, yeah. I'm loving it. I'm like, I'm yeah. not injecting. I'm not injecting anymore. I'm going to start handing everyone heliochrism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I the mean, ones that are open to it anyway. I know yeah. that's not. <laughs> All right. You, you know what I had one doctor do one time is, um, you know, because he was, I mean, he was making the same point is he goes, you know, um, he, he, he made some comment. He goes, you know, some people aren't into like a holistic -y, new agey, you know, he was say, saying things like almost like in a derogatory way. So he goes, so I made it into this little, you know, he was making these like little bottles and he just gave it some like, um, like mainstream name, like it was just medicine. Like, you, you know what I mean? He, he wasn't saying it was a prescription but he was just making it like it was some over-counter thing that you would get at the drugstore. And, you know, it was essential oils. And he just said, you know, with that, they don't question. Well, so, and you know, that, that came yeah. to me, that yeah. came to me a little while ago. And I'm like, you know, I could just start calling this um, scar oil Yeah, <laughs> and no yeah. one would question it. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, thank you, you so much. Doc doctor, you know, toboggan scar oil or something you know what i mean and like <laughs> yes <laughs> who who would know <laughs> exactly as long as it worked it, it would be fine and so yeah 
Well, and I'm using it on one of my nurses that has had um, some breast um, biopsies and had some yeah. really large scars and they had been injected before. And I told her it was just too risky to do that anymore. So yeah. like, why don't you be my guinea pig? And she sent me some pictures and she's like, look at how much improved this is. And yeah. I'm like, wow, that's, it was just amazing. So thank you so yeah. much. You're so welcome. I, I did use that a lot for, um, uh, when people were were having, um, you know, you know, breast cancer, where they had either taken out uh, partial or they had, mm -hmm. you know, taken the breast and then replaced it, you know, because the scar tissue there, it's not just the scar tissue, but it also starts to be ranges of motion with the arms and things like that, and it's quite can be quite painful, and um, it was really super helpful for that. Yeah, you know, really she is having problems with that shoulder and yeah. um, it's almost like getting caught. Should I have her start rubbing it up on her shoulder? Yeah, like have her hit the spot and you could have it up there or you could even uh, like by the time it gets up to the shoulder, you could um, uh, uh, probably just put like marjoram on it or mix a little bit of helichrysum and marjoram. Okay. And, and uh, that would still impact the skin and uh, the lesions that are underneath the skin, the, you know, the scar tissue, but it would also start to help the muscle. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I did tell her about the marjoram, so I'm glad I'm on track there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're right on track. And those two work really well together, like really good. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And then I'm trying to find my neroli right now, and I'm usually alphabetical here with all my oils. But mm -hmm. which did that come in a kit that you can? No, recall? it's it's a little bit pricey. So it's um um it it would have been by itself. It, it's that, probably a that might right. have been the one I put back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you I'll don't have you. that, use the Lang Lang. Use okay, Lang -Lang. I know I have that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. You're so I appreciate welcome. it. Take care, Shannon. Bye bye. Donita, your hands raised. Hey, Donita. Hi, Greg. Finally made it to choose. Hey, hey. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, I have a quick question. So the last few weeks has been busy, crazy, st stressful, and a lot of sleepless nights. All good overall, but... You have allergies right now? I don't... I never have allergies. Even if I okay. do, I don't even know the side effect. I don't even know what I should be feeling. But okay. what I'm what I'm sensing um, something new. So the nosebleeds have been really crazy, and so I've been taking Shizandra internally. I've been feeling. And they're not getting better. Huh? Are they getting better? They kind of come and then they go again. It's bizarre. But then I feel, so I've got a few things that are happening. So I'm not quite sure. It might be just me being super tired. Um, I've got some heart. There's just like tightness and like the, I don't have problems with my heart. But it feels like um, I'm breath in my yeah. head. Let's have you get like, go to the drugstore and get your blood pressure checked. I do. It's fine. It's low. It's, it, it's low. Okay. I have the thing at home, but it, so, so actually the thing is also my jaws. They've been really super tight the last few weeks. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of tension and stress. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of stress then. Because um, I'm also feeling like there is a lot, like there is a humming noise in my head, some sort. So that might be yeah. all together. Okay, so um, gotta get real personal. Uh, diarrhea, okay. diarrhea nope. at all, or constipation? No, I'm actually what I've been doing because my inflammation in the body. You know, I've been taking um, lymphatic stuff and kidney mm -hmm. stuff to flush it out, mm -hmm. and I've been using the lymphatic gland in um, either lymphatic gland. I've been using coconut, you know, in fracturate fraction. I can never say that word. But so, so no diarrhea. No, 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 no. no and no, what no. about nausea? Are you having any nausea? Nope. Nope. Okay. But lots of stress in the external. I don't see it. Yeah, I, I, I had a lot going on with my pets and a lot of things at home. So I didn't sleep well. And now I just, I go to sleep. I'm tired. I wake up in the middle of the night, 
many times. It's just, it's weird. Um, did she buy the brainwave? Yes. You did buy the brainwave kit. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to have you do something. Um, It's not anything that's out of one of the class. Well, it's a combination of things out of classes. But so this is what you you look like your delta waves are are being um, impacted while you sleep or trying to sleep, and um, they're being disrupted by too, too much uh, activity with al alpha waves, which can be like, you know, kind of like in a way like you're kind of processing things or going over things like at night while you're sleeping. Um, it could even be a little bit unconscious, but it's more almost um, alpha would be more associated with like um, your mind being calm, but in a waking state. So even though you're trying to sleep, it's almost like you're in half sleep, half wake. And so um, uh, I'd like you to do the pattern with the, for like the Lord's prayer, you know, how we do the, the crown, I'll, I'll, I'll just lay it out because I don't even know if it's in, um, actually, I think it's the end of I have I have a pen, I can just write down. <laughs> But you're, okay. you're very yeah. right. So, you're so right. okay, so do crown. Yeah. Forehead. And when you're on the forehead, do the back head at the same time. Okay. And then do the ajna, the area between your eyebrows. Okay. And then your throat. Okay. And then your heart, like your front heart. No back. Just front? No, just do the front. Yeah. And then the front solar plexus. Yeah. Then your navel. Yeah. Your spleen. Yeah. Your Ming Min. The sex chakra. The basic chakra. And then to the back spleen, your Ming Min again, and then the top of your head. Crown. Right. So you're going to do do that first with the theta waves. Theta. Okay. And then next you'll do it with the delta waves. The same protocol. Okay. Yeah. Do the same 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 thing. But it's, it's, you've done, yes. I feel like I'm in this yeah. sleep awake. Yeah, and you, you look like you're, you're not quite um, uh, hitting um, like things in the REM, non-REM, you're like a little bit. I mean, it happens to any of us. But the thing is, is like, if it happens too long, it starts to increase um, inflammation in the body. We don't really start to hit the anabolic state in our sleep time. And um, eventually it causes um, severe fatigue, you know, by going through and doing that. And so like, if you look at people with really bad chronic fatigue syndrome, like it's that, but on steroids, you know, they, they, they just kind of almost don't hit, um, delta states when when they need to and so a lot of um a lot of uh, the pain limbs are to, to alleviate pain but to put the body in a delta state which is like kind of a state of little to no activity i mean there's always going to be activity because you're alive but i mean you know it's a um, it's uh, like a quieter time and it allows the body to calm down, release agitation, and um, uh, have like a rest and repair mode. And you're, you, you don't look like you're hitting rest and repair when you're sleeping. 
Yeah, I've been, I've been, it's interesting because the last few weeks, you know, on and off, and I've been doing as much as I could, you know, taking care of like rest and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's been like this adrenal almost fatigue and I could feel the buzzing. Yeah. Like I was just yeah. on steroids, but I wasn't, so, like I was busy. That you know? that was what, 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 one of the things I was concerned about was um, when it, whenever you're in that state where you feel like you're in that adrenaline state is, um, Marjoram is really good. Like you just take long, a lot of long, slow, deep breaths with marjoram, and it um, it pulls you out of um, it will pull you out of a fight flight mode or sympathetic activity, you know, sympathetic nervous system activity. It it um, it pulls you out of uh, fight flight, and it helps to improve uh, the tone of the vagus nerve, which is tied to um, parasympathetic activity or rest and repair. And so um, you could be inhaling that during the day in times of stress, or like if you're having a little bit of insomnia, this, this thing that I'm giving you is a way to treat it um, kind of intensely. Like, um, you know, I, I had this in the original sleep class, but I was like, it's just, it's too, it's, it's too much, like it was too much for, for the class. And so, um, um, you know, we are going to be integrating it. Like I think Mary was asking, you know, are we gonna integrate it or is it gonna be separate? And so, some of the things we're gonna augment some of the treatments with brainwave activity uh, treatments and um, certain kinds of insomnia and sleep disorders and things like that. Um, we are gonna be tackling with brainwave protocols. Um, and including chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Um, but um, here, you know, you wanna pull yourself out of uh, fight flight um, during the day. And then at night, that should help continue you not going into fight flight or resting in fight flight. You know, because even like if you're in fight flight and you're laying down, you're still kind of in that place of processing something because fight flight is the part of your brain that has to do with processing the sensory information. And so you're laying down and you're just kind of processing all the sensory information from the day, from whatever. And even though you're relaxed, you're not in um, rest relaxation, you're in basically daytime relaxation, which means you should be awake and you know, doing something or sitting there processing something rather than trying to sleep. And so, yes, it's a, re a relaxed state, but it's not deep enough for sleep. You know, it's, it's still tied to your waking states. And the body was like really getting really sore, really achy. Yeah, like that's the, the, it's, the, it's the inflammation setting in. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, also, it's mechanically what happens. It's just literally mechanics. Oh, I knew there was something wrong. Yeah. Something happened. I knew because it's like the heart as well you know i'm feeling something mm -hmm. not quite there i can i can feel a lot of things but in the jaw you know and it's interesting because i've been using marjoram i've been taking mm -hmm. baths with marjoram mm -hmm. and sea salt mm -hmm. and i've been actually using it as a liniment not liniment as a in oil just all over yeah, my yeah, body. Yeah. yeah 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 that for the aches and pains but what do i do last night i actually sprayed some marjoram liniment on my jaws because i was yeah. just like clenched yeah. So here's kind of a one-two punch that you can do. Is get the um, get from the health food store to get that spray on um, magnesium. You know what I'm talking about? That magnesium that's topical. Yeah. And like make it like um, like twenty percent of that magnesium uh, because it's uh, the spray is an oil. Like so, you take twenty percent of that magnesium oil. And then uh, the other part, like a, like a lotion uh, or massage oil. Mm -hmm. um, and then add a bunch of marjoram to that and then shake it all up and apply it to the body. And the marjoram and the magnesium work uh, really well together. Mm -hmm. So it will take a lot of tension out of the body very, very quickly. Yeah, we, we're, um, we're, we have a bunch of uh, uh, 
products that we're making for like just turnkey that aren't like the oils, but they're like sprays and liniments and ointments. And, um, you know, we've been working on them for about a year doing test runs and, you know, just making sure that they do what we want them to do and everything. But one of the ones is to, to use like antispasmatic oils with a bunch of magnesium oil and mix it all together and then apply it topically. And it, it just takes the tension out of the body so fast. I actually mix, um, for the one, uh, what am I mixing? Oh, I'm, I'm mixing magnesium and then an ionic um, lithium. Because the lithium calms down the sensory nerves. You know, it's topical. It's, it's not internal. It's, this is all topical. It's meant to be a topical treat. I've been, I started taking magnesium internally and what I did is yeah. marjoram, marjoram in water and I rinsed like with yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Perfect. it helped, but doesn't last. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it helps, but your issue is actually your sleep. Yeah, yes, because I'm yeah, it's your been sleep. sleeping in God knows how long, you know? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you start to regulate the sleep, you'll start going in the spiral of getting better. But and like you, you can... You can ch you can chase all of these symptoms, but really the issue is you have a little bit of a sleep issue, and so no matter what, it's always going to come back to the sleep issue. I mean, it will start to affect your emotions, it will start to affect your mood, it will start to affect your thought processes, you know, and it all is tied to the sleep. Yeah, I've been nailing it down with all the oils I can and everything yeah, yeah, that yeah, I yeah, could, yeah. but I can yeah. tell that it's like it needs to go. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do, do that protocol over the next couple of nights and um, see see how you feel. And then from from there, uh, we can make some adjustments, you know, okay, but I, like uh, at least two or three nights solid. And it's okay. It's like just before going to sleep, just do that. Yeah. Go by yeah. Okay. I mean, you'll probably start to like doze off when you start to do it. Um, you, you know, it's, I mean, it's going to make you expel. You know what I mean? Okay. It is going to make, but you know, you're pretty tough. You've been in so many classes that um, I, I don't even think I need to say don't like you're going to expel. That's yeah, fine. you're, you'll just shake it off. So in the morning, if you feel a little groggy, it's probably congestion, energetic congestion. So what just do I get do? Rid of, um, you know, you could spray down with like chocolate root cleanser or like Palo Santo or something like that. Just get it moving and you'll be fine. Okay. And the strong yeah. cup of coffee. A strong cup of coffee <laughs> or just movement, uh, health raise blend, you know, just even inhale the health raise blend. You it know, it's, raise. I actually diffused that in the house today for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm I'm breathing a lot of hyssop and a lot of that. I'm diffusing a lot of that, you know, pulse onto hyssop and splendor and health raise today yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Hyssop's really good for not absorbing things from the environment. Uh, negativity from other people and things so probably always good for everybody to use but. and uh, clearing yes oh thank yeah. you so much Greg. yeah it's a great way to clear a space too like if the room is you know full of stress energy or you know there was just uh you know an intense meeting or intense conversation you know diffuse hyssop or spray hyssop or you know do whatever man it clears it up like that yeah i love it um yeah. My husband is in Nevada staying in a rented place. And I was like, go get yourself a, his, a diffuser. I gave him yeah. some oils, the basic oils, of diffuse his up as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because that was a thing, like when I used to travel and, you know, I'd like to meditate in the hotel room sometimes, but uh, sometimes the hotel rooms are a little too, you know, energy from other people. It's not the greatest place to meditate. So I would burn incense to clean the space up. And then they really buckled down on, um, you know, burning anything in, in a room. And so, I, you know, it really took me a while of like, oh, what am I going to do? And so, you know, I tried a couple of things and um, man, Hyssop or Palo Santo will clear a space in no time. Like no time. You know what else clears a space really fast too is uh, uh, Glory of Lebanon. Yeah, but it's barbecue. Yeah, it smells like a barbecue. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Greg. I'll do You're it. So and I'll send you guys an email. Yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. 
yeah, keep us posted. And uh, yeah. weekend class with angels is going to take me right where I need to go, right? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can you spell the name of the oil that clears the space? I don't, I don't I'm not familiar wow. with that. I don't know. Um, so there, one is Hyssop, um, the H-Y-S-S-O-P. No, and then the other one is um, Palo Santo. I so got that PA, one. Okay. Glory of the Lebanon. other one you said. Glory of Lebanon. It's, it's a, a blend. blend. Yeah. It's basically um, cypress, fir balsam, and juniper. It's um, the reason it's called Glory of Lebanon is it's referencing um, a quote from King Solomon out of the Old Testament. And, um, you know, it talks about uh, the glory of Lebanon. Uh, you know, it's a reference to transmutation. And so those three oils, when combined, are very good for transmuting. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Greg, can I ask you a quick question, please? Sure, yeah, yeah. It's What's in the lymphatic the gland? Um, you know, I just, I, I, I kind of refined it here not too long ago. So I just did an, an updated version of it. Let me look. So it's um, ginger, white pepper, cypress, cedar, sage, mugwort. You know what? I'm giving you my old formula. Hold on. Let me look at. Let me look up the new version. No, that is the new one. Okay, so sage, mugwort, rosemary, thyme, Turmeric, golden eucalyptus, and frankincense serrata. Okay, thank you. Oh, what were these oils for, listed for? Um, it's a, it's part of a blend that I make for the lymphatic system. And can I ask you another quick question, please? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I asked you before, like a carrier oil, super light carrier oil for the face. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. But um, what are the best oils and safe oils for the skin, for the face, you know, to kind of bright. One that I, yeah, one that I use quite a bit for uh, uh, facial oils is rosehip oil. But essential oils besides helichrysum. Oh, right? essential oils, oh, besides carry oils. Um, cystus is used um, in cosmetics. Uh, uh, myrtle is used in cosmetics. Um, helichrysum is used substantially in cosmetics. Um, uh, alemi can be used. Um, uh, definitely things like rose oil and things like that. Um, Rosewood? Is there rose No, rose wood? oil. Ro oh. You know, like um, Damascus rose. I mean, for, for the price, it's not the most practical thing to do. Um, um, cystus is because it's a really super good astringent, you know, it, it tightens up the tissue. Um, myrtle is because it's anti-inflammatory and um, helichrysum anti-inflammatory and it opens up um, uh, congested skin and uh, uh, helps get to the bottom layers of the, of the skin, you know, so it basically, 
you could say it detoxifies a little bit, but it mm, helps the skin stay kind of hydrated, so to speak. Like it's not hydrated like water, but it's like it helps get blood and everything to the parts of the body that, parts of the layers of skin that um, are lacking circulation, but without being stimulating, you, you know, like without being hot. Um, Helichrysum applied to the skin um, also is, um, stimulates the like the liver, the kidneys, the spleen to detoxify. Parsley is also really super good. Um, you know, you'd use that at night. You could use it as like a facial uh, scrub. Um, poplar is actually also really super good for the skin. Um, fancy. Yeah, that, that's again, getting fancy. Um, an another one, like if you're trying to, uh, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, like if, if you're starting to be concerned about um, um, it's like, preven per like prevention of skin cancer and things like that. Um, uh, parsley combined with um, a little tiny bit of hyssop can be really good for any skin area that you're concerned about as far as like skin cancers. Not to treat skin cancer, but it's, it's, it helps to regenerate the skin. Um, like it's a cell regenerator. And so um, um, frankincense can actually be good for the skin as well. Um, but um, usually those first three that I mentioned, helichrysum, cystis, and myrtle are the, kind of the go-to ones for, for that. Um, Lemmy, I think is for like more like oily skins or skin where it's patchy, where it's oily in one area and a little bit dry in another. Lemmy can be very good. For, um, sometimes they'll use cedar for really oily skin areas. Um, Thank yeah. you, Greg, because I want yeah, to- just, Yeah, yeah. It's more like my intention is for bringing, you know, hydration and balancing. Mm -hmm. the skin just to go uh, natural as much as possible because he the helichrysum is always super good for that helichrysum is always super good for that and myrtle would probably be good for that as well and if it's the oily combination it's alamy right just adding that to it yeah, yeah. That, that's what i've been told like um you, you know a lot of times when i'm treating the skin um i'm treating like areas or an area over like an arthritic area or you know or treating something where there's been you know damage um i have done some some work uh, with with um, the skin care on the face but um uh i i don't have a big enough repertoire of things that i've treated for for that for like you know normal everyday skin care usually i'm treating like some sort of health issue, like, you know, a scar, a cancer site, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you, how do you, what do you, how do you like the grapeseed carrier oil? What do you think? It about? can be a little bit greasy for the face, like um, for the body, I think it's okay. Um, but it can be a little bit, a little bit too greasy. And so um, um, avocado oil is real thin. Um, there's another one that's real thin, but ro rose hip is what's traditionally been used for, you know, doing doing stuff on the face. It's just it's a little pricey for base oils. You know, you would use it just for the face. Yeah. Do you guys carry it on your website? Um, I don't know that we have it on the website, but I have it. So like you can always email it. And, I mean, I buy it in big quantities, so uh, we could get it to you pretty, pretty cheap. Okay, I'll email you. Yeah, I, I get most of the base oils I get actually out of um, direct from where they process it, like where they process it before it goes to people to make it into, you know, like gallon size containers. And so a lot of that stuff comes out of Africa. Your oils, guys, are just phenomenal mm -hmm. on all mm -hmm. levels. So I'm just, yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. Thank there's you. A, there's a big, um, big distiller out of Africa that, that um, it's like a co-op 
with, with a bunch of people and a lot of the base oils come out of Africa before they go other places. Okay, thank you very much for this. Mm -hmm. Question, would lovage internally be good too for renal artery stenosis diagnosis? Oh, what were we just looking at? Actually, you, you know, I just stumbled across a piece of uh, something for that. It wasn't that particular one, but it was just anything like chronic um, kidney issues is um, mugwort in lotion rubbed over the kidney area. Like, you know, put four or five drops on uh, in your hand with some massage oil and then rub it over the kidney area on a daily basis. And um, I had read a uh, thing about um, they had used that for chronic, uh, really super chronic kidney issues, even to the point where it's kidney failure. You know, you just try to improve function the best that you can. But... What's good for TMJ? TMJ can be uh, body misalignment, it could be tension. So it's one of those things where it's, you have to just start kind of treating to see what's up. And so um, marjoram is always a good starting place for, for TMJ, inhaling it and rub it on your, on your neck and, and shoulder area. Um, yeah, lots of long, slow, deep breaths, you know, because you're a lot of times trying to take yourself out of um, fight flight. Um, you could actually even put it in a little bit of massage oil and rub it on the, the sides of the, the face to take some of the tension out. Um, uh, also using um, things like anise or uh, galbanum, uh, either internally or inhaled to take the tension out of the respiratory tract and out of the gut. Um, sometimes that is producing um, tension in the autonomic nervous system and, and causing some of the fight flight issues. Um, and then hyssop, long deep breaths with hyssop also will tend to relax the body and um, deepen the breath. And so a lot of times when you do that, it might not make it completely go away, but it will reduce it quite substantially. Um, you can put a couple drops of water uh, of marjoram and then kind of do like a gargle and then spit. Um, that can be helpful as well. Would the marjoram and helichrysum Greg talked about for Shannon's patient also be good for frozen shoulder? Uh, it definitely could be a starting place. Um, frozen shoulder can be, um, there's like a stiff shoulder and then frozen shoulder also starts to be where there starts to be um, calcium deposits on the back side, uh, the, like the front, it's actually the front side of the, the shoulder blade, like where it kind of moves up against the rib cage. And so, you know, it's that little wing bone that's kind of on, on the back side. And so um, he, helichrysum and marjoram could be helpful. And then also a combination of uh, iron bark eucalyptus and uh, the lovage. You know, the, that blend that we make, the uh, Arthricare, is, is designed for um, calcium deposits and joints and things. And so uh, two of the big components are the iron bark eucalyptus and the lovage. That can be also very, very helpful. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I would start with those two and I, I mean, couple times a day if you can. The other thing that I like to do with stuff like that is um, put like um, a bunch of pine, pine oil in um, alcohol and make it like a spray. And if you have a little bit of galbanum and wintergreen, you can add a little bit of, of that to it. But, you know, it's mostly going to be pine. And, and then put alcohol in it and then shake it up and then spray it and rub it on the area several times a day. And um, you know, you're trying to, to decongest the, the area of like blood and lymph and detoxify the area. So 
think of it as like doing something over a period of time rather than it just being a single treatment. And a lot of times with medical aromatherapy, we're not looking for the, the one or two application and boom, it's cured. You're, you're trying to nurture the body into a, a place of um, like higher function or, or better function and slowing down degeneration. So you're kind of trying to nurture the body into a place that's um, better for the body to be able to you know heal itself. And so you're gonna probably do a multifaceted approach where the pine liniment you, you can spray on the area and then you can make a, a massage oil with the, um, the hue chrism and the marjoram or like the arthrocare version of either arthrocare or lovage and um, ironbark eucalyptus, Excuse me. And you could probably even throw a little rosemary in there just for circulation and then rub that on the area. And you're really going to kind of rotate between the three of them. But over a period of time, you know, within a few days, you should start to notice that um, the shoulder starts to move much more substantially. And um, the thing that's good about using the lovage is it will stimulate the kidneys to function better. Um, the, the types of pine that I like to use for, for the, the liniment is, I like to do a, like a one-two punch. I actually use two different pines for that. Um, I mix um, sylvester pine, which um, stimulates uh, cortisone production in the body. You know, so it's like a nat natural occurring steroid in the body. And then um, dwarf pine, and I don't even know, do we have that on the site? We might not even have that one on the site. We'll, we'll put it up on the site for you guys. It's things, it's dwarf pine is something I use in blends, but um, I don't know if we put it on the site for you guys, but it's a really super good um, lymphatic decongestant. And um, it has the combination has a bit of an analgesic effect, like, you know, pain relieving effect. And so, um, it takes some of the pain out and helps clean the joint up so that it can start functioning more properly. Yeah. You guys, you guys have had really like a bunch of really good questions tonight. Talking about rose oil, the chief priest of one of the temples in South India asked for a good rose oil and mentioned Turkish rose oil. Is that the best? Do you sell the rose oils individually? Yeah, it's, we sell the rose oils individually. Um, Turkish, Turkish rose is, um, uh, it's definitely one of the top like three or four. Like when you start getting up there, it's, it starts to be like kind of preference. The, the Turkish oil is really good. It's probably about the equivalent to the Damascus. You know, they're just really right there at the border. And um, so it's, it's like one region or another region. Um, the Damascus and the Turkish are very, very similar. And in fact, a, lo a lot of times the, the Damascus rose is Turkish rose that's been smuggled across the border and then so those Damascus rose. Um, those are both very, very good, very solid. And then the, the most premium oil, it's, um, it's quite rare. Um, uh, here we call it Rose Alba. Um, it is the white rose. It is, um, uh, they called it the Holy Rose for a long period of time because it was cultivated exclusively by the Church of England. And then uh, for some reason they stopped cultivating it and people picked up and started cultivating it and then um, it made it into an oil. And then uh, it, it is the only rose oil that activates both the heart and the crown. And um, uh, rose alba is considered the most premium of, of the rose oils. And so, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of it made every year. I mean, there's several kilos of it made every year, but, um, you know, we only buy up like maybe eight ounces a year or something. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it also has a price tag to it. 
And so the Turkish rose and the Damascus rose is a bit cheaper. And then ro the rose absolute is a very inexpensive way to have, it's still real rose, it's just it's not steam distilled, it's done more of an absolute. So it's a bit of a heavier note. Um, it still smells kind of rosy, but, but um, not quite the way that the, the Turkish or the Damascus does. And then the, the rose alba is an even higher end uh, rose. And so we also blend all of those together and do a rose supreme. So you can get the benefit of all the roses. And so, you know, once you start playing with rose, as long as it's not synthetic, you're doing pretty good. But uh, the Turkish and the Damascus are about the same. And then um, the Alba is a, a little bit nicer. I mean, nicer, you're splitting hairs, but you know, it's nicer, it's a little bit more of an even higher note scent wise, and then it activates the crown. And then Cindy, your hand's raised. Hey, Cindy. Hi, um, I, you might have talked about this, but I had a phone call, so I missed part of it. Um, I, I was asking about the, the um, A plus kit to go with the Brainwaves class. And if you could maybe talk about the, the value of, of that compared to the regular kit that comes with that class. Um, so the regular kit will, will still function. You know, you're gonna be guided through the, the protocols that like a single oil will, will do it. And, um, um, and, and the vital center kit, the, like the A plus kit doesn't in, include the, the brain waves. That's like a, kind of a separate thing, but this is basically for the 11 centers that we'll be targeting in the vital centers that are all have to do with limbic function. And so um, they're not something that's on the site. And um, even when we were talking about um, doing this class, they're, they're really strong for what they do. And so, I, you know, I was going back and forth like, uh, do we release them? Do we not release them? You know, I, I've used them therapeutically for a long time, but um, sometimes they're so strong, I don't even have people do patterns. I'll just have them inhale the oil and, you know, it starts shifting their nervous system quite substantially. You know, limbic function is tied to like your nervous system and uh, um, like emotional body. And so you're really coming down that, that physiological emotional component and you're coming down some of your neurology at the same time. And so um, this is based on um, and, uh, some esoteric teachings that um, the, probably the easiest place to access them is, uh, or at least see, see them is in Astara. But mm -hmm. even there, they don't talk about them too much. They just kind of mention them. And then they kind of mention them here and there a little bit. But we went through and um, over the years, it's been part of some of the protocols. I just haven't talked about directly that it's tied to these, these um, vital centers, but it's, um, it's like the precursor to what you would do uh, with uh, the Zodiac class, the alchemical Zodiac class. Yes. Um, it would take the Zodiac class much, much deeper. And so it really calms down the, the lower emotions. I mean, it really calms them down. And so people who have gotten triggered, um, who are easily triggered either just from stress and being frazzled or because of trauma or, you know, abuse or whatever. This is basically what I used to always use is I, I would run them through just a few of them at a time, or sometimes I'd run them through all at once. But uh, like a few weeks ago, I was telling, telling everybody that um, there was a couple of people who had um, gotten kind of triggered and I didn't even run them through patterns. I just had them start smelling the oils and it calmed them down. And then something happened that normally would have triggered them, you know, even if they weren't in a triggered state and they could just say, like observe it and go, wow, like normally I would be triggered, but I'm not even triggered right now. And so, you know, you have to kind of keep doing it a little bit, but you'll notice that after a while, you just, the emotions just, they just calm down, you know, and it really allows for 
you know, higher emotions, but like higher mental faculties to really start kicking in. Yeah. So, um, so these are not oils that are, we're not even gonna post them on the site, you know, where, you know, if somebody needs a fill in or something, we can do that, but um, we're just selling them in the kit and, cause they really don't have an application outside of uh, treating limbic issues. And so, um, you know, you wouldn't really do a hit and miss with it. You'd kind of go through the whole uh, set of symptoms, unless you were making like um, like products for topical things to, to treat uh, emotional responses. Um, yeah, it's it's they're incredibly relaxing. So they're but, but not like, but not like sleepy relaxing. You know what I mean? They're like relaxing, but they're like. I'm not worked up today. I'm not getting triggered today. I'm not, you know, not getting stressed out because sometimes even the stress is your physiology is reacting and not your emotional or mental body. So it's even calming that down. Oh, that's, that's yeah. fabulous. And so there, there's um, um, Erlene Cheney, uh, like each center, she put like a you know, like like one of the ventricles, she put like spiritual lake, and then like the, you know, she just had like little esoteric names that she called these areas, and so I even put that information in there for you guys to to kind of have as a reference because there's very strong esoteric principles, but it could be easily applied to physical and psychological issues and. Um, you know, I was going back over my notes and um, uh, the, the cases where um, I got really good results in treating really crazy viral conditions and cancers, where we got really good results, um, a majority of them I had treated the vital centers. You know, I, I had actually kind of forgotten about it. And I was going back and I was flipping through my notes from, from way back when, you know, this was like four or five years ago um, when I had put the last entry. And uh, a lot of the success stories had um, treating the vital centers as one of the early components to the treatment. Okay, so they're, they're not really part of the class, but the class comes with the class will come with a kit, but they would be too expensive to be able to do um, that way. So we're, we're just making like kind of a normal kit and we're, we're even doing the kit a little bit differently, but um, these will, will, yeah, would never be part of a, uh, okay. a kit. Yeah, it's like they're super A plus. Yes. All right, thanks for that. Yeah, you're so welcome. Anita? Hi hey Greg, it's hey, me again. Hey, hey. Uh, I have um, a quick question regarding this mm -hmm. Lancy A plus uh, kit. Will it mm -hmm. be okay for my brain <laughs> right now? Yeah, actually it would be probably helpful. In fact, there's um, one person who has super, super chronic um, like brain issues and, and chronic fatigue syndrome that we're actually doing a test run on to see how, how it treats. And so again, the, the issue is to try to improve the quality of, of sleep. And so, you know, you're nowhere near in the same position as that person, but, you know, uh, same, same idea, disruptions with delta waves and things like that in sleep. Okay. And another question in one of the previous classes, and I didn't make a note, you mentioned about the rosemary that you never used to put it on the web. Yeah, it's the, it Tucson, it's the Tucson blue rosemary. Ah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. the fence is something different one. Okay. Yeah, it's um, the okay. reason is it's uh, really super hard to get. It um, comes out of Africa and it's a stronger antispasmodic than the other rosemaries. But, um, uh, I, you know, I, I've been working with this one uh, distiller in Africa for, for a while and we just like way ahead of time, like bought a bunch of things before they were even distilled. And so we're just starting to have those things like roll in. And I bought like enough to be able to do my blends and make it available for you guys. Perfect, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. 
It just it took planning on my part to be able to pull some of these things off for you. Could Greg say a bit more about how the Vital Centers class kit works with the nervous system? Well, we're, we'll be targeting the limbic system. So it's how your uh, nervous system uh, in your body impacts your lower emotions. And so it has a lot to do with your emotional states, the lower emotional states, but also how your body reacts to things in the environment. It has to do with like emotional learning. It has to do with um, uh, how you process things like fear and trauma. Um, yeah. And when these things become regulated, it becomes easier and easier for uh, higher vibrational energies to come in. So. Um, part of it is you're calming things down so that the immune system works better. It's not a high, as hypervigilant as before. And it's able to go and um, function better when it comes to viruses and, and cancers and things. You know, it's not a cure for any of this, but it definitely helps improve the function. But it definitely will calm emotions down that are based on your physiology. And then it... Um, like in a way you could say it helps to organize your mind because you're not being overloaded by sensory information. Yeah. Can get Greg please say what action blend, integration blend, and Sharanaka tea are for? Um, I think actually I'd like to add to their question, action blend, integrate, um, inertia, and integration. Oh, um, so like action blend is about getting something new inside. You know, it's helping to get something into the heart and you're putting something in motion. And then inertia keeps it from going, uh, like it takes it and runs with it, keeps it going from a downward spiral to more of an upward spiral. And then, um, integration starts to harmonize the two components. So like anytime you're trying to bring something new in or make a change or a shift, your body is always in like this um, state of trying to maintain balance or homeostasis. And it really resists like shifts and changes of something new. And um, then it starts to turn into your physiological emotions and then the instinctive mind, right? And so this helps to bring something in and allow the body to shift and integrate it. You know, so you're kind of walking through the steps of gently bringing in something new while overriding the resistance of the body and the lower emotions. And so um, it's going to be tied to a prosperity class that we actually teach in um, Sarasota in uh, May. And so. Um, those oils probably won't be um, in the kit, but um, some, some of the oils in, in the blends, um, we can't access enough of the oils to make it for everybody's kit, but eventually we should be able to. But um, we have enough to make a little bit of them. And so, um, yeah, that, that's one that um, I accidentally put. <laughs> it, where did we do it? I think it was, was it Seattle? we accidentally put it on the table in Seattle. And so um, it wasn't supposed to be out to the public yet. And then it got out. And so we just said, well, but um, we weren't going to release it until May. But yeah. It's like if you've smelled that the action blend, it, it is so clearing to the chest and the heart. It is crazy. Like it's like all the tension in my chest is just gone. It is crazy. And part of it is um, there's a certain type of spruce, the Sitka, and then um, Larch. Like we were able to access some Larch, but we can only get uh, about four or five ounces uh, right now until they do their next distillation. So Larch is super, super rare. It just fell off everybody's radar. So, um, I mean, I've uh, financially motivated the distiller to distill a whole bunch of it, and I'm buying up everything that they make. 
because I mean, it's just an incredible, incredible oil. Larch is the only, uh, not that this says anything about it therapeutically, but it's the only um, evergreen that loses its leaves in the wintertime, which is kind of interesting. And it should pan out to be not too expensive. So. And then Sharanagati. Sh uh, Sharanagati is um, uh, an anointing oil. It, it basically increases conductivity to whatever deity you're putting your attention to. But it is truly an anointing oil. I think they're seeing some of the new ones. Uh, dreaming? Dreaming? Um, it, it's to help just that dreaming. Yeah. Wait, two minutes. Yeah, two, two minutes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, sorry, we're not gonna get to do a process tonight. Right. Hey, Greg. Wait, can I, yeah, I can answer one more question. Oh, quick question. This dreaming thing, if I get the, mm -hmm. you know, those um, A plus, is the dreaming, yeah, a good wall for me? Like, um, I would say do the theta and the delta and the vital centers will definitely augment what you're trying to do. It should be helpful. Um, I'm thinking that, you know, we're doing some test runs on some individuals, but we're even thinking that the vital centers are probably going to be a uh, treatment for chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. And so um, I'm waiting till I get some more cl clinical evidence of that. But um, preliminary look at it, it's looking good. And then, um, you know, it just helps to regulate the, the immune system, especially the parts that fight viruses, bacteria, and cancers and things. And that would also be tied to autoimmune type issues. And so, um, uh, the vital centers are good for anybody who's also doing the angel work, materialization. I mean, it's there's a couple of these classes where we could have thrown them under any of the classes, and it would have, you know, it could have been materialization, could have been angels, it could have been the alchemy classes, and the vital centers would fit in any of those. So healing classes. So the dreaming oil is just to help you dream or help yeah I, I would say like you could put that one on the back burner like okay. um uh look at the vital centers and then doing those two things that we're talking about okay perfect thank you yeah, so much yeah. you're so so um boy thanks for a great uh, q a session tonight you guys um we will see some of you this weekend if not we'll see you next tuesday and we'll pick up where we left off but i gotta jump into another meeting. And so, um, boy, I loved hearing from you guys tonight and we'll keep that ball rolling next week. And then in April, we'll start doing a practice session on Wednesdays that will just be about an hour, but it will be just like an ongoing thing where we bounce around from materialization to a healing thing. And, you know, we'll, we'll try to augment your guys' practices as much as possible. So 